Hey guys, how's it going? I'm at a friend's house that is uh, having a problem with a pressure washer. I'll let him explain it probably better than I can. What's the deal with it? It, uh, it? it will run for about 10 minutes and then just shuts right off. Okay. I haven't tried to start it today. I ran it yesterday. Uh, I went through the whole thing last year. Uh, I put a new coil in it, new spark plug, basic tune-up stuff, cleaned the carburetor, adjusted the valve. Um, it's never run right. My neighbor gave it to me. It's just, when I got it, it didn't run at all. Okay. And so, what did you do at that time? That time I, I, I found out that it had no spark, so I replaced the coil. Um, make sure I checked the woodruff key. I made sure the timing, like it hadn't broken and the timing was off or something. I, it just, it's never run right. And uh, when it's running, it runs fairly good. Just getting it started is awful. And then it just shuts off. I don't and it, it rips the pull start out oh, of your yeah. hand like you pull it five six seven eight times and you know it will eventually it will just kick back the last time i tried to start it after it shut off it backfired really bad hmm. are you holding the trigger down on the uh gun when you're yeah, trying to start I it okay pressurize it yep yeah it's, yep. sometimes that fights you too yeah uh, all right so you you've cleaned the carb last year you put a coil in it when you first got it yep. and did he ever have problems with it running or was no he never had a problem it just sat for like so it sat, had an issue yeah. when you got it, when you went to try firing it up. You put a new hose on it, it looks like. Yep. And I just did that yesterday. And now you're frustrated because uh, it runs for 10 minutes and shuts off. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll bring it back to the shop. We'll see if we can figure out what's causing it. And uh, if not, we can go buy a new one. <laughs> That's exactly what's going to happen. All right. <laughs> All right. So we got it back at the garage. And let's... Just give it a couple of pulls, see what we get. And gas is on, choke is off, choke is on now. And it does have fuel in it. <laughs> well, that's what he's talking about. Yeah, that's not good for the fingernails. All right, let's get up in the air and uh, take a peek, see what we can find. So it looks like it's a roughly eight horsepower Honda. I don't think it's a Honda clone. I think it's a actual Honda. Not one of their cheaper machines. Do you see it looks like it has a low oil pressure shut off. Not quite sure what this is doing in the circuit and then it has an on off switch. It looks like it's all in series. Let's see what we got. So I would think to ground is what we're looking for. It's probably getting a signal if it uh, gets oil, starves for oil, it may go to ground and then if you kill it on the kill switch it also goes to ground and then that signal continues on and through whatever going, probably that cry goes right to the coil itself to uh, complete the path of ground. Let's go see what it's got for quality of fuel. light yeah unfortunately you, even if somebody tells you everything that they did you kind of have to go back over it it's got a little metal ring of key or something down there probably off the gas cap maybe it's a little cloudy but I don't see like it has water in it sitting on the bottom yeah that little, that little ring went on the end of that yeah generally Stuff like this doesn't really shear the flywheel key. We're going to look at it anyway. But it's not something like a lawnmower where it can hit something and the engine stops suddenly and then the mass of the flywheel wants to continue moving forward and that's what shears the key. It's a pressure washer, so the only thing it really has is a water pump. And uh, I'm not saying that a water pump can't lock up and cause its issues. It's just not normal. Get that plug out of there. We'll give a couple of yanks and take a peek at the spark real quick. Guys are commenting on the motorcycle video, the Yamaha, and my cell phone was going off in the background, buzzing. Shut it off, get it out of the way. It's not my cell phone. It's there's a see the bottom of it right there, that little bit of white above the gas cap, right there. It's an air conditioner, and you're hearing the air conditioner just cycle. That's all. On the on the dark side. Let's see. 
can see any spark on them. <clears throat> Give her a better yank. Yeah. Okay. Maybe a little on the weak side. Let's give it a... It has spark. I wouldn't exactly call that great though. Kind of looking for a uh, yeah, bright blue. Not uh, going to call that our issue, but we're going to continue moving forward. What you want to do is go uh, pop the float ball off the carb. We'll take a quick look, make sure there's no water in the fuel. Of the gas can be able to capture. Let's see if we can. Uh... Actually, just pull the carburetor out. <laughs> there you go. I like to get what's in there so I can assess what's been going on. If you see a little bit of water in there, that's definitely going to cause you an issue. And the water will sink to the bottom. It's heavier than gas. And dirt and debris, but especially on a pressure washer, it's always it's always around water. That bowl looks pretty clean. And that fuel, I do not see anything. Normally there would be a little tiny puddle of water. I got nothing to point with. But you kind of see like where that dirt is right down in there. And probably most of that dirt came off of the outside of the bowl. Trying to get it out of there. And I don't see so much of an issue there. I can let this sit in a corner. Sometimes it the water gets so mixed up in it, it actually gets suspended a little bit. And you let it sit and you look at it 10 minutes later. And there could be a little puddle down in there yet too. So we'll put this to the side. Actually, you know what? Let's uh, let's let it flow a little bit more. Just in case there's some sitting in the pet or the tank, you know. Does you want to say it runs for ten minutes and dies? So also another indication. Sometimes it could be watering the fuel. Again, I'm not seeing any right now. Let's move on. So my hunch is telling me it's spark related. Uh, that's just a hunch. So we're still going to go over all the bases of things that can possibly cause it. And one of the things we're going to look for is valve adjustment. I don't know if this engine has a built-in decompression valve. And sometimes if that's the case, you can adjust the valves incorrectly. If you don't have it in the right spot. Go and give that a little bit of a bump. And I'm looking to get both valves. Well, oh, there's no play on them. This one seems like it could be a tad loose. That's on the intake side. I gotta go look up what the spec is. Let's go give it a little bit more, see if we could find. It feels like it's quite a bit. Usually valves, valves are like six thou, five thou, three thou. Some older stuff, they could be up around 10. I'm gonna grab a feel gauge. Just gonna go get a, a quick idea to see what these are right now. And I don't know where I am on the cam right now, but that's 10 thou. So the exhaust valve, I'm sitting straight it is 10 thou maybe even 11 and this one i'm i think where i'm starting to get onto the stroke that one feels like it's probably about eight or so seems a little on the high side a little uh, too much free play so it's a good man to look up the specs and it is six thou and eight thou 
plus or minus one. And even with that, you can kind of, on the exhaust, I, I may even go a little bit tighter than that. Let's uh, give her a little. So if you watch it, you're going to watch the exhaust valve. And you're going to see how that gives like a full compression uh, push down, right? And you watch it right there. Did you see it? I don't know if you were able to pick up that last little bit of movement. I'm going to go around again. I'm going to do it under a little bit of speed. Full. And then it gets a little bump. You see that little bump that it did? That's the decompression part of it. It probably is moving maybe 10 thou, 20 thou of a, a movement. Well, if you have, say, six or, we're probably about six thou, too much room, five thou, too much room. It's that much longer that the exhaust valve is staying closed. And what happens internally, when this thing spins up and is running at high speed, that, that little bump isn't even there. It goes away. Internally on the camshaft, there's like a lobe that as RPMs come up, it, it takes it out of the picture. It's just to aid in assisting trying to start it, again, for that, like that kickback that you feel. And that's more than likely what's causing it is this gap is too much. So we're going to go adjust the valves. We're going to go find ourselves... Uh, a lot of times what you can do is take a, a screwdriver, go down inside the plug hole, you're going to go past. So you're going to have one stroke, which is the compression stroke, and one is the fire. So both valves just right there just fired. The exhaust opened and the intake opened. It's letting it, right now, it's, the piston's going down. It's letting air fuel in because it opened the valve inside. Piston goes all the way down. Now the piston, uh, the valve closes, and then the piston's going to come back up. A little bit of decompression happened right there to kind of let that charge of air that's getting squeezed, it let a little bit of that out so it's a little easier for the piston to come up. And then it's going to get a probably whatever top dead center is right now, should probably have a little screwdriver or something we could poke in there. Hold on one sec. Use a pick. See if you can feel where the piston is. Uh, it just dropped down. So we already went to the point where the cylinder would have fired and it's pushing back down. And it's going to come back up. Now the exhaust valve is opening. After the ball of fire happened, the piston is, prob the piston is probably about two-thirds of the way down. The exhaust valve is opening. It's, let it's blowing out all that spent uh, air fuel exhaust mix. Now the piston's coming back up. Exhaust valve is closed. Intake opened. Piston's going back down. The intake is still open. It's still, again, sucking that air fuel mix in, the, the fresh charge. Piston's down. Intake's closed. Piston's coming up. Squeezing all that air fuel mix. That's top dead center. The little bump probably is. Probably just happened. I didn't notice it. Right about now, it's at top dead center. The spark plug's going to fire. And it's going to try pushing it back down. And I'm going to try catching it right about a little past that top dead center. This is where I'm going to adjust the valves at. We'll get a feel of gauge in a couple of wrenches. So the outer nut is the actual one that locks it down. And the inner one is the adjustment. So we're going to go crack the outer one loose. We could even use that little line that somebody put on there as an adjustment. Okay, we're at six thou. We're gonna go run that in. It's not gonna be a ridiculous amount, but it's enough. You think like half a turn would be ridiculous. Uh, would not be much, but it makes a lot. The way these are kind of too, they, they kind of rack, so you wanna hold them squared off. Actually feels pretty good. And I warn you now, a lot of times you go to tighten the outer nut back down, it'll make the whole thing get tighter because you're pushing, you're, you're taking the slack out of the threads. But we'll see what we get. Let's go run that down. I would suspect, yeah, it's going to be too tight. So what you do is you kind of have to keep in mind where you are and just kind of back it off and try. So you're going to go like, and let's go get rid of that much. Tighten it down. Check it. Uh, still a hair too tight. Uh, 
if you do the same engine over and over again, you get a feel for it, like a, like VWs. I know them really well, air cool VWs. That's still too tight. It's probably gonna be too loose now. Thinner 14. Mm, that's pretty good right there. Again, they get to watch the racking of it because that'll it'll mix up your uh, adjustment. It's a hair too tight. And even the intake is a little on the loose side too. Do the same on that one. And you can see that mark is now at three o'clock. What do we start out? About 12.30 or so. The mark on there right now is at, we're gonna go call that 12 o'clock. see how much so I already know from the, the previous one how much it changed when I tightened it down so we're gonna go call it right about there maybe still too tight and the more the more that you work on one engine over and over again the, the, the more you'll know how much of a back off you need to do some of you are probably saying to yourself really that little bit is what's causing all those issues yes <laughs> not so much on the intake but on the exhaust but we still have a problem he said like this like got it a little too close he said that when you would start it up you know, once you got it running, it would say run, uh, run, but it would die after 10 minutes. That would, this would not be that problem. There's something else kind of going on. Yeah, that's pretty good right there. That's, that's gonna, it's got a nice, uh, cause it, if the gauge is too tight, you're actually pushing this, the valve down. You don't want that. You don't want to be influencing the, your measurement by actually collapsing the valve. I think we can come off probably a hair. Nah, we're gonna leave that alone. Like that. We're both right at six. While we have it apart this far, I am gonna pop the air cleaner off. Air cleaner, the carburetor off. Air cleaner's already off. And I'm gonna give that a soak and give it a clean. just because sometimes it's good to inspect what somebody else has been into before just so that in your mind you can eliminate it we are going to need something to cut off that fuel supply hold on one sec my needle nose vice grips are out somewhere let's see if we can get it with regular ones what about you just put a a bolt in the end of the line too. No way. You should be able to pull that and actually get the gasket out. Pull it forward, you should be able to rotate it enough. We can get the throttle linkage off and the spring that takes the slack out of the system. There we go, now we got the card. Get a better look at what's going on underneath mainly concerned with right down inside here that's the main jet where it sucks the fuel up gets a lot of corrosion looks like the seal is uh the seal may have been sitting kind of cockeyed not sure don't want to wash that because it'll destroy it pull the pin pull the needle does not look too dirty let's go drop that over there so i don't lose it 
And we're going to want to go pull that. We're going to go pull this little filter. If I don't want to come off. I may want to support that in the vise. I should have done it when it was on the machine. Nope. Want to round off. We may just leave that well enough alone. That's the fuel intake side of it. There's a spider. He dead? He's dead. Hit the road. Let's go over on the bench. We'll get it taken down instead of trying to do it in the air over here. You see? Hopefully. Right, we gotta get. This is the wrong size screwdriver, but that's the idle speed. It's the stop for the throttle. Stop step from the throttle plate from stopping at a certain RPM. But the reason why we want to take that out because there's another jet hiding underneath it that's held down by it. And it is this right there. And it's actually got to come out even a little bit more. There's a lower section that should come out of there too. And all that is held in by that. Plus, it's not great to soak the plastic in the parts cleaner. You can get a perfect screwdriver for that. You want to try to find the best fitting screwdriver you have. It's brass on aluminum. And if the wings of your screwdriver sometimes too will cause you an issue, like if you try to use this screwdriver, it'll start to go in, but the wings hit on the threads on the outside and it'll tear up the threads and you won't be able to get it out. Yeah. We should be able to get poke ourselves in there a little bit. The emulsion tube. Sometimes they come out, sometimes they don't. You can push down. Depends on the carburetor. Sometimes you can push the emulsion tube out. There it goes. And then there's a bunch of little holes in it. Which actually, this looks quite good. You know, looking at it under a scope, sometimes these little passages can be blocked and it will give you uh, run issues. This looks fairly clean, like I said, but if I didn't clean it, it would have needed to be clean. We would have put it back together and it would have been screwed up. <laughs> so, we'll take the bullet. I'm going to go throw that in the ultrasonic cleaner. Let it wash with a couple of uh, you know, selected pieces. Go have lunch and I'll meet you back here in a couple minutes. I really like to try to get that off before I do a nice six point socket on there, see if we can get it. There it goes. See if not, what'll happen is it'll fill up with the uh, parts solution. Should just be gas right now. There you go. That doesn't even have the screen in there. Somebody might have taken it out before us. Usually, I, I believe there's a screen that sits down in there. Yeah, I could use the cleaning. And pop the rest of the valve off too. Yeah, someone's been here ahead of us. All galled up. Because they used a regular screwdriver. That just opens the little passageways for the fuels to go through, which you don't kind of really want to uh, subject to the fluid also. Now I can go to lunch.
Well, I saved you the reassembly just to speed things up, but pretty much it's taking everything and making it clean and putting it right back together again. And then I'm going to do one last check of the, uh, the seat and I'm going to blow in the valve is open upside down. I can't blow through it. I let the float hang down. I can blow through it. Just making sure that that valve is working correctly. The jets back in bowls back on. We are going to go through that bowl back on and we want to rotate that where the drain is accessible when it's off. I got to go look at that. So I'm going to leave that loose for a second. When we go to put it back on the machine, which I think is just something like that. We'll rotate it. See how lucky we get. Just save it. You can have access at it. You know what I mean? When it's on there for a later date, you can drain the bowl. The gas gets that knuckle needs to go on Grab this. It's got a pin that goes down in for the choke. Lever for the choke. Two gaskets, two bolts. Let's go put it back on. Yeah, so I think we have the. I have the bowl on backwards. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. So I, I think we have the kickback on the starter addressed with the valve adjustment. But running and dying, I have not seen what is causing that yet. So I think we still have some more homework to do, possibly. And my guess would be spark related. There's one thing I didn't show you before I started filming is I checked the oil level and the oil level was somewhat low and I did top it off. So there's a possibility it was running and shutting off, shutting the spark off due to the low oil. It wasn't terribly low, but I know on uh, generators, they're really picky. I've seen them where they're just on the lower of the acceptable marks. I've seen it where it's been on just the lower of the acceptable marks, the high and the low limit, and it was still shutting off for it. So I did not, for the life of me, see the air fuel mix on the side that I never took out. All right. And I cannot live with myself knowing that I did not do that. Why did I not see that? Why did you not tell me? I actually, I'm going to grind off the flat that is on there and unscrew that out and blow that passage out. It just goes right through there. It's just an air fuel mix. Rookie, I tell you. Let's try that again. that a bath. All right, I put the rest of the air cleaner back on, put the plug in it, cleaned it. Let's give her a shot. I think we're all set. Gas on, choke is on. Let's see if it rips out of her hand. Still does. <laughs> Let's get rid of 
some choke. Half choke. I would say he still has a problem with spark. It seems very intermittent. Quick of another. got issues. I think we're gonna do some removal of things that can interfere. So we want, this is the lead that goes to the coil. Let's disconnect that and that should bypass all of this stuff. Let's see if we get any difference. Choke is on. I'm gonna move it over so I don't punch the vise. I wonder if we have no let's get some choke off. No spark at all now. Swap that plug out. I swapped that plug out the last shot before we open up and start looking into the magneto. Put the plug wire on. I think we're good to go. No choke. Free to commit. Spark checker on there. We eyeball what's happening. See, if we can see a break in the signal. Where am I gonna put you? Let me uh, kick you to the left. And can you see that? Right there. I'm missing something. You're gonna go in. Let's take a peek at what's happening in by the magneto. Possibly there's an air gap that's touching or something along that line. Or sheared, a sheared flywheel cake. 
and this would be an, an option. Get some lights set up, we'll take out, uh, check out that mag. Let's see what we got. I don't know what that's from. Looks like it was parked in that position for a while, huh? Two rust spots. That bottom half, I don't know if you can see it. The bottom half of that magnet looks really close to hitting a flywheel. Like the air gap's too tight on that one. That one looks okay. That one, not so much. Let's go run that past the magnets and take a look at the magnets. Make sure they're not loose or anything. Let's... Take the center bolt out of the crank, this right here, and we'll take a look at the flywheel key. So from a blind's eye view, looking down it, it looks like it's okay, but that is not a promise. I'm actually gonna go take a puller. We'll pop this thing off here. I wanna clean up the surface anyway to get a better air gap on the coil. I got a puller set up. Let's go pop that off of there, see what we got. That's pretty easy. Yeah, it looks okay, I do not see. Generally what you'll have is you'll have half a key left in the groove and half a key over to the side. Now, a couple things that are coming to mind. Again, that, that coil being rubbing. I, I'd give that a 10% if that. We're gonna clean that up. I'm kind of wondering if the decompression may have broken inside the engine. Is another possibility. Could have a bad coil. The new coil could be bad. I'm going to take a minute and clean these surfaces up. And we'll readjust that and put that part of it back together. If not, we have to go. We have to go in. So a couple of thoughts. I got the flywheel cleaned up and back on. Now you can see the air gap. Um, and I'm looking at the airspace right there. And the airspace right there. You can see that it's cocked down. Can you see that? Get you a little bit further. There you go. So it is definitely cocked a little bit further, but he did say he replaced the coil on this. So one thing I'm kind of wondering if maybe it is the wrong coil. Again, I don't have the old one to go find out. Let's go pop that off. We gotta take it off anyway to set the adjustment correctly. Let's just go pop that off. We'll take a quick look. That's the kill wire without that on there. Getting grounded, it'll always have spark. I don't see that. Uh, we should probably eyeball that, make sure that's not rubbing or cutting into anything. Well, let's get that coil right off of there. Let's see if we see anything odd or goofy. She had a part number on it. See part number? We can kind of compare it. Let me uh, Google a picture and see if, as long as it. The other thing too is if you if you mounted it wrong, that would change the timing, though, wouldn't it? Did they have enough wire to reach down below. go like that or can go like that and that could definitely so what when um, you're pulling something over and it does that pre-ignition and it's exactly what it, what it is it, it's firing too early when it kicks back like that so the engine's spinning and the piston's almost up at that top dead center and it's under compression it's got the fuel air mix in it you go to light the spark plug to push the piston and continue the path but what happens when it's ripping the pull start out of your hand is the engine's spinning up here's the magnet that triggers it 
what I do with the coil. Here it is. Magnet triggers it, sends spark out. Well, if this happens a little too early and the piston's not up all the way and it fires, that's what rips that pull start out of your hand and causes that to happen. So that's kind of a couple of things we're looking for. That and the uh, fact of the compression too. The compression release can add to that. Another thing I'm thinking of too is the quality of fuel. If fuel is really old and the uh, octane is its resistance to fire. Resistance, uh, it needs higher temperature, higher compression to fire the higher octane. If you have a lower octane, it'll fire easier but at some point you get what's called pre-ignition again it's kind of like what we're dealing with right now so those are all things i'm just kind of keeping in mind while i'm playing with this uh what were we going to do we we're going to look up the coil and see if the one that comes up looks aesthetically the same as that so i do believe one of my hunches was correct so the pictures i found the coil does look like that coil i don't see an issue with it but the orientation should be like that, the first thing that I was picking on. So that I'm sure could make for a weak spark and the timing of spark to be incorrect. Because I think there's a diode internally. I wonder if you're fighting against that. That's just a guess on my part. But while we're thinking aloud, I might as well mention it. Let's get it off the magnet, first of all. And they're not that picky to an air gap. It's not like points. Points are really trying to be, you know, right on the money. So we're gonna just run these in real quick. And I have some a piece of cardboard. A piece of cardboard's twenty thou. We are going to use that. I also cleaned the flywheel too. I cleaned all the rust off of everything. I'm just going to suck that right down. I'm going to bring it by the magnet. And we'll see how it looks. By the magnet. I'd say that looks decent. Double check the bottom one. It looks like it might be a little on the larger side. Yeah, I'm gonna be able to do that one more time. I think that bottom one's I need to push down a little harder. Let's go tighten that one up first. That feels pretty good and even. And that explained why that wire was so long. Why there was so much space on the kill wire. That's the first thing I kind of noticed with it. it. Seemed a little funky. And this should, the slack should just be able to go up. For the coil. I'd say we put it back together. And give it one more shot. See what we get from there. So I'm not sure if I covered it earlier. So you wouldn't be seeing this. The flywheel key. If the flywheel key shears, it'd probably be easier to see with this off, but if the flywheel shear key shears off, where the position of the crank is in the piston when it's at top dead center, well, if that, that key is shifted, the flywheel itself could be any position compared to where the crankshaft is. And the flywheel is what fires the spark. So if the flywheel is out of position, say 20 degrees let's say that it's normally lined up right where it is I mean and then the magnet is actually over here it's going to fire that difference in the timing where it's off so that's why the flywheel key was important to look at because that can uh, directly uh, influence when the coil decides to fire by uh, what position it is compared to what the actual center of the engine is that makes sense i hope so <laughs> i don't want to do it again hey it's all back together Get the wires plugged in to me on let's see if it'll rip out of my hands choke is off actually that would help i put the original plug back in it too so it's, it's all back together with its original stuff hope this doesn't hurt
Didn't hurt. That's a good sign. Let's go try that again. Ha! Got it. <laughs> Backwards coil. You didn't see that coming, did you? All right. I think we need to hook that sucker up to some water. And to be fair to him, he got this not running and no spark and put a coil in it. So the could have been the person before him put it in backwards, made it so it had no spark. And that was what was wrong with the original coil. They just screwed up as far as that's concerned. And he just copied and put it back together in the same fashion. So no, uh, no issues on his end. It's just, you know, is what it is. Comedy of errors, I think they call that. All right, it's been sitting for about two hours. I was getting something else done. Let's go turn some water on. I don't know if I should be doing that. <laughs> he said something about a leak. Yeah, he may want to fix that. <laughs> Let's go fire it up, see what it does. Auto priming. Should be able to put some through the gun though. There we go. Well, I think it needs a little bit more love, but I think we also uh, have found what the engine issues are with it. So that's pretty cool. I think we'll be happy with that. I'm not sure what that, I think that might be the, I don't know if that's a pressure relief valve or what. I'll have to go look into that. But again, our part was to get the mechanicals to working to where the engine would stay running and start easy. So looks pretty good. Let's go see if we can go fire it up one more time. I gotta pull the trigger on the hose. Yeah. Can't do that one handed, hold on. Yeah, you gotta pull the trigger, release the pressure.
the only machine that can clean itself. So that worked out pretty good. I didn't want to hit up by the gas tank too much, but that was it. Backwards coil and some other things that need some love too, but that was the primary reason why it was doing what it was doing. And a valve adjustment a little on the uh, large side too. So with that guys, I'm going to go sign off. He's going to go take care of the, the, the little incontinence problem it's got there <laughs> on his end. But uh, finding out why the engine was not performing like it should and cutting out and doing everything it was doing, we were able to figure it out. So thanks for hanging out with me in the garage, doing some wrenching and uh, troubleshooting and figuring out what was happening. Took a little bit of a journey to go find this one, but I'm glad we were able to do it. So until the next one, guys, I'll see you later. Bye. I almost forgot about the, the fuel. It's been sitting over here for about two hours. And it definitely has water in it. You can tell how much, uh, it's quite a bit too. And that was just what was in, for the most part, the carburetor. That means the rest of the tank has it in there. It's got that cloudy kind of look to it. It wasn't clear through the bottom of it. So you should probably purge that out. I'm gonna let him deal with that, not myself. Lola, go get your ball. Go get it. Go find it. Go get it. Go get your ball, it's out there. It's not anywhere near here. Go. Go get it. I'm too excited to see it. I know, she's off. You smell it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, on that note, <laughs> we get the ball later, I guess. What you got? That's it? Game over? <laughs>